Hi, today I'm going to show you how to shade the Dungeness Crab from my quilted wall hanging pattern, Another Point of View. We will be using Sukineko All Purpose Ink and Fantastics Applicators. You will need a separate applicator for each color. The colors we will be using are number 12, Tangerine, number 36, Wisteria, and number 53, Autumn Leaf. My work surface is actually a silicone uh, baking sheet. I got this at Bed Bath & Beyond. I think at Christmas time Costco had a set of three of them that you could purchase. I like this as a work surface because it's just a little tiny bit spongy and you can use an iron to um, tack down your project and then it doesn't move while you work makes it much easier to apply the color without the fabric rippling it eliminates the need for freezer paper and i can continue to work and continue to heat set without doing any damage to my table below and it just cleans up really easy with a baby wipe let me show you a simple way to transfer shading details from your pattern to your project First, take a piece of plain tracing paper and just a good old number two pencil and trace the shading elements that you wish to transfer. In this case, it's the indentations in the claw of the Dungeness Crab. Trace just enough of the outline so that you have placement reference. Turn your tracing paper over and retrace the lines. I used a white piece of paper so that I could see what I traced easily. I came back in and traced over my shading lines There's no need to trace your outside placement lines. Here's my trusty little Dungeness Crab. I'm going to place my tracing and use these outside lines to match up my edges and redraw over the shading lines. When I remove the paper, I have lightly transferred these shading lines to my crab. There you go, you can see them. The graphite from the number two pencil transferred with pressure to these places. Now you can see where you need to put specific shading marks. To fill a Fantastics applicator, I'm gonna dip it into the bottle and into the ink coming only as far up as the end of the little felt surface. You can't see into the bottle really well, so sometimes you end up a little bit above that. But I'm just going to take a paper towel then and wipe off the excess. Using a scrap of muslin, I want to rub off some excess ink and as I'm rubbing I'm twirling my applicator like this because I want to remove ink evenly from all parts of the applicator and I'm oh, pressing about as hard as you would when you write with a ballpoint pen. Now I want enough ink off so that when I brush back and forth 
it doesn't leave little dark blobs at either end. I want to test it on a piece of the fabric I'm actually going to use and make sure it absorbs the same on my actual fabric. Different fabrics absorb differently, so you always want to test on a piece of the fabric you're going to use. This looks pretty good. Yep, and I've kind of checked and rubbed and checked all sides. So now I'm ready to go back to my crap. My Orange Fantastic is loaded up and ready to go. So I'm going to start applying the orange in small swirling circular motions. Let me show you how that works. When I apply the ink with a bullet tip, I actually put do it in these little swirling motions because it allows me to go back and forth and around and around without having any serious overlapping marks. If I draw like this, what I end up with is hash marks and texture where I don't want it. You can see how two layers appears darker than one and the back and forth motion just creates a look that I don't like very much. I like this little swirling motion right here because depending on how hard I pressed, I'm pressing really soft right here. I can get a really light coverage and it gives me kind of a pebbly texture that um, works very well for shading and coming back over the top of again and making um, a more smoother finish. I might also point out that, let me back this up a little bit here, that when I'm working, I have two or three scraps from my crab fabric stuck to my um, silicone mat that I can always test on. I always like to test on a scrap before I go to my actual piece. If you touch these just a little bit with the iron, they'll stick to the silicone mat and not um, move around at all on you. The crab itself sticks um, fairly well. Oh, here's the other thing. I don't have these guys. Let me come in a little closer. I don't have my pieces permanently fused yet. Um, it makes it a little bit easier for me to work and if I get one of them for some reason I just goof one of them up I can pull it off there and replace it with another one without having to do a whole bunch of work and starting the whole project over. I'm just coming in and shading off some of the lightest parts using a little swirling motion. to add some orange to his body and because these aren't permanently fused down I can pick up the front of the claw and work behind and around and underneath without getting any on the claw or creating a little bit of a ridge and I'm going to kind of just fill all this in using my little swirling motion with my orange applicator. going to add some orange to his body and because these aren't permanently fused down I can pick up the front of the claw and work behind and around and underneath without getting any on the claw or creating a little bit of a ridge and I'm going to kind of just fill all this in using my little swirling motion with my orange applicator.
my little crabby guy is all ready for to have the purple added so I'm going to come along and just start buffing in some purple along some of the edges. In some cases I'm going over the orange in some cases I'm not. I'm going to fill in these little um, penciled in areas that need to be shaded keep coming along and buffing and shading and adding some purple to my crab. I'm ready to come into the body with my purple and I'm going to flip this little um, claw out of the way and just come in and get lots of nice purple on the crab body. There's my purple all swirled in on my body. Now I'm going to use some of the number 53 autumn leaf and come back in and start adding some more detail to my crab. I'm going to go over the purple some, over the orange. Just darken it up, add some more color. When I put the orangish color over the purple, it makes kind of a nice um, brownish, goldish color that I like. It just adds another layer of dimension to the shading, and I like that. I want you to see that my number 53 is starting to... Um, run out of ink so I'm going to stop reload it and buff it out just like I did the purple one and finish um, adding the autumn leaf to my crab okay it's all reloaded so I'm going to start coming in now and adding some of this autumn leaf color which is kind of a you know, kind of a burnt orange color I'm going to go over again some of the purple, some of the orange, and just add some more contrast, darken them in a little bit. Again, refer to the um, progression photos that are in your pattern. I photographed each stage of applying the ink so that you can see where and when to add the colors. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. Okay, I've located the cap, the shell, to my little Dungeness crab here. And I've laid him on here to have a look at how it all fits together and see if I have enough color and I'm happy with the way everything looks. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to back way up and have a look at it far away and see if far away it still looks pretty good. It does look pretty good. I could come in and knock off these really white edges on his claws but I think I'll wait until I lay it on the background to see how much contrast there really is there so that's the Dungeness Crab using Sukuneko ink. You need to heat set the ink to make it permanent and I do that by placing a clean white paper towel over the top of my project. My iron is on dry cotton setting and I press over it until it's hot enough that I can't really leave my hand there and that will permanently set your ink. 
before fusing your crab shell to the rest of your little crab, create the eyes with a permanent black marker. by just creating two little ovals and coloring them in right above these two little dips in the crab shell. There you go. Lay the shell on your crab and fuse it in place. One final check. Position your little crab on your background. He looks pretty good. If you need to make any final adjustments, now is the time to do it before you permanently fuse it in place. Just a couple of final notes in my pattern. Another point of view. There's a full page showing all the stages of uh, doing the coloring of the crab. There are also several additional photos on the disc that comes in this pattern. So between that and the YouTube video, you should have really nice looking dungeon nest crabs. When you get them finished, please send me a picture. I'd love to see what you did. Thank you. Good luck.